Hello and welcome to the first in a series of videos which cover various features of the Python programming language. Now, there are loads of really good resources online and more specifically on YouTube which cover Python. I'm definitely not the first to approach this and you can learn Python so many different ways. J just using videos may not suit everyone. But this series is designed especially for pupils studying computer science in UK schools, including those doing qualifications like GCSEs and A-levels. Because Python is, well, Python, and doesn't belong to any one exam board, the videos will be quite generic. I'm not going to be tying them to any particular exam board, but I'll be emphasising as we go through various concepts which are particularly relevant in UK curricula, and likewise leaving out various constructs which aren't going to be required for most exams or assessments. If you are wanting to learn or revise programming for a specific qualification, especially if you have a written exam coming up, have a look at other playlists on my channel where there will be videos which cover the more theoretical programming concepts, although many will be shown practically here. For now though, I just want to give a brief overview of Python itself and show you how to get set up with Python, both installing it on your computer and also accessing it online, and then get you to write your first line of code as well. Okay, so really quickly, what is Python? So Python is what we would consider a high level and a very versatile programming language. A programming language means we're using it to interact with a computer. We can get a computer to do what we instruct it to, essentially, which is very exciting. It's high level. So high level is a concept of the levels of programming languages is a concept in computer science. So a high level language does not mean that it's uh, like especially difficult, that's what I perceived high level to mean when I was learning. High level means that it is a lot more readable, it's a lot closer to English language than say the computer's language which is in binary. So you could program a computer in just binary because that's ultimately what a computer understands. That's gonna be very difficult and so doing it in a high level way means we can do it in pretty much human language just following a very strict set of rules. And so the high level languages is a massive category, but even among them, compared to other programming languages you might want to learn, Python is especially high level, which is really good for beginners because it looks especially like normal written English, even if it's a slightly weird version. So the top here, this top line is from C or C++, and this bottom line is from Python, we'll do this Python code a bit later, printing hello world. Uh, they're the same code, they do the same thing, both outputting hello world to the screen. But you can see immediately in C, it's a little bit stranger looking, you've got some more elements to it, we've got a semicolon. Python is a little bit cleaner and is a little bit more readable. And it's one of the reasons why it's very versatile, it can be used in lots of different contexts. So can C, to be fair, but Python is often used as sort of a glue between various different purposes. YouTube for a while used Python uh, to work. It's using lots of different applications. You can do pretty much what you want to with Python. Maybe not the core aspects of Python, but you can use what we call libraries to expand what Python can do and link to various different applications. It's also versatile because within Python you can effectively choose what style you want to follow we call them paradigms in computing. So different paradigms for programming languages allow you to code in different ways. And Python supports the main programming paradigms like functional programming, like object-oriented programming, and like structured programming, which is what we're going to start with. According to the latest study I found, Python is currently the third most popular programming language in the world. Behind C is number two, which is the code up here, and number one is Java, which you may have heard of. Both of those two are slightly lower level than Python, although are still considered high level languages. But um, Python is really, really popular, especially to learn it. If you ever go to university to do computer science, it's very likely you'll learn C, Java, and Python. Good languages to use. I personally learned Python first and then learned Java and C afterwards. Python is a good springboard. But Python is used a lot. And it's like hypothesis on my behalf, but I would suggest for every big technology company will use Python code somewhere in their company. Even if it's not creating their main product, they'll be using Python code somewhere. Maybe it's running a website, maybe it's linking a database, maybe it's running some artificial intelligence algorithm. Python is used a lot. But I will say, as we go through these videos, it may not be immediately clear how on earth what you're learning would ever be applied. I certainly remember learning Python and thinking, this is all fine, but how is this going to ever be used? And 
it, it becomes a lot more linked to real life problems once you start to use those libraries I mentioned, which tie your code to a particular purpose. When we're learning for general constructs, which are required to do the more interesting stuff, it can seem very detached from real life problems, but we need to learn the basics before we can do the more advanced stuff. Python itself has been around for a while, released back in 1991 by a man called Guido van Rossum, a Dutch programmer. There are some good interviews of him on YouTube if you're interested. And the name itself doesn't actually come from a snake, even if the logo apparently is meant to be of two snakes, a blue snake and a yellow snake. I didn't realise that for years. But the name comes from Monty Python, which was, or I suppose is, no, was a British comedy group back in the 70s in particular. Pretty famous, and he was obviously inspired by them and named the language after them. But you, I, I mention this mostly because there are quite a few references to Monty Python as you learn Python, and it would be very confusing if you didn't um, know why they have those references, even if you don't get references yourself. There'll be one later involving this man on the right, Eric Idle. In terms of getting set up so we can start doing some coding, a code is just an instruction to a computer. A computer can't understand our code on its own because it's high level, it's too high for a computer to understand. We have to bring that down to what a computer can understand, which is binary. Thankfully, we don't do that translation. It's done by a program called an interpreter, but we need to have access to the interpreter to be able to run, to be able to carry out Python code. So there are two main ways of doing this, both of which I'll show you briefly in a second. The first way is downloading it to your desktop, which is good if you want to keep it offline and save your files and organize it that way. But there's also, you can access it online via a web application, and I'll show you an example of that later as well. Perhaps the easiest way of getting Python is just by Googling install Python, and you're looking for the downloads page of python.org, who run for, uh, Python. And so at the top, I, I'm, I think it may auto detect your OS, your operating system, so Windows or Mac or Linux. But if it doesn't, you click for one which you are, so I'm Windows, so I want to download the latest version. There are, have, there are previous versions down here. I would stick to the latest one, there's no reason not to really. Click download. If you are prompted to, save it and wait for it to download. In Chrome, it's done at the bottom, and now you can click it. So it is, at least on Windows, a .executable file, a .exe file, and so um, you just click it and it'll run, and you can pretty much leave all the defaults how they are. There's no particular reason why you wouldn't want to. Um, so you can just install now. There may be a uh, administrator um, request, just sign in or press yes, and then it will install like that. Okay, and now once it's done, it took me about a minute, a minute and a half to install. You can close it down. Once you have Python installed and you've closed the installer, you now can search for IDLE or IDLE. This is the name of the IDE the integrated development environment which we can write Python code in. It's called IDLE, not IDE, because one of the members of Monty Python is called Eric IDLE, so it's another reference to Monty Python, but it is an integrated development environment. So I've got two windows up here, but this window which pops up once you open IDLE is called the Python shell, also called the interactive shell. This is where we can type code line by line. It's really good for testing things out, and so the first few videos will be just in the shell. And the first thing you should type in when you do any programming is always get the computer to say hello world. So if you copy this bit of code, print bracket quote hello world, close quote, close bracket, and then press enter, so the return key or enter key on your keyboard, you'll get the computer to speak to you. So hello world is the output from the input up here, this line of code, the computer is running, is processing, is carrying out this instruction to print hello world and it's printing it to us and printing being another word for outputting it on the screen. You can't really make a proper program in interactive mode, in fact you can't, you can't save it or anything like that, it's just for testing really and also running programs. Instead in Python you need to go to script mode. So script mode you access by going to file, a new file like that and a new window pops up and you can type the equivalent here, the same code, print hello world like that. And now, this time, instead of pressing enter, pressing enter will just go down because it's where we'd write a proper long program. So instead, to run this code, we go to run at the top and go to run module or press F5. You've got to save your code this time, which is good because we can keep it. You press OK and choose a place on your computer to save it. Python files are called something .py, so I can just do, uh, I've done loads of ones here, uh, example, and press enter, like that. And it goes back to the shell 
because that's where the code is run. So instead of having it actually our code in the shell, it just shows us the output in the shell when we do that. Instead of actually downloading Python and installing it on your computer on the desktop, you can access it online via a web application. An example is replit, REPL.IT. And this is free at the time of recording, even if it does have a paid version as well. So I'm going to, in the first few videos at least, be using this. It has the same features as Idle. In fact, some more useful features as well, which I'll show you in a second. So once you go to REPL.IT in your browser, you can either just start coding straight away by clicking this and then going to Python like this. And then you will create a REPL, which is their sort of equivalent of opening Idle. And here you can just get started very quickly. It will give you here, we've got on the right hand side is what the equivalent of the idle shell is. So on the right hand side, we've got the interactive shell. We can type here. So again, if you haven't done it in idle, make sure at some point you type print hello world. It's convention. Millions of programmers have done it before. Press enter and it runs it like the idle shell would. On the left hand side is replit's equivalent of script mode. So instead, I can now here type in again print hello world. It's always a struggle to type it. Um, when you're trying to talk. Um, so I've got my code here and now as opposed to saving it, thankfully it saves it for us, which is quite nice. I can hit run here and it runs it in my interactive shell over here like it did in idle. So very, very similar, um, but this is um, good because you can do it without installing anything. And I'd really recommend you sign up as well. So you can sign up here again, like I said, at the time of recording it's free, at least initially. And so you put a username, your email and a password and sign up. Once you are signed in and have a new workspace, what's good about doing it online is you can share your code quite easily. So there's a share button over here. If you click this, you can share a link to your workspace. So if you have code which you want to share with say a teacher or a friend, you just put the link into browser and it'll show them the code. You can also just share the output if you want to over here. So it's quite good at sharing codes and also it can save it and keep it for you without having to manage it on your computer. So. Personally, I prefer to do it offline, but doing it online is really good, especially once you're starting out. Feel free to use alternative software to Idle or Replit if you want to. Unfortunately, you can't just learn a programming language just by sitting watching a video. It's really important you actually try for stuff yourself. So at the end of every video, I'm going to include a try now, which is an exercise or multiple exercises, which will hopefully reinforce the content of a video. For this video, it's really simple. Just have access to Python, set it up somehow, either desktop or online and then make sure you have copied this code print hello world and I can see hello world coming back on your screen.